you are not far from saving. Some of you think that you have fallen so far just because you are going through a lot of problems. Just because that storm is persistent in your life does not mean that you are far from saving. Just because you are going through fire and it seems like no one understands, it does not mean that you are far from saving. I know some of you have tried to pray and it seems like things are not even working out. You have tried to cry out to God and it seems like you, you are not heard. But God hears each and every prayer that you make. You are not far from saving brothers and sisters. I do believe there are people who need deliverance. Deliverance from the tormentor. Deliverance from diseases. Deliverance from financial uh, problems in their lives. There are people who even have uh, 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 curses in their lives. But God is not far from saving you. Now, today's scripture is in the book of Isaiah 1, 18 to 19. Isaiah 1, 18 to 19. And it reads, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Notice that the scripture says, come, let us reason together. God is even giving you an invitation to reason with him. To reason. And, and says, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Some of you think that you are very far from salvation. But listen, the Apostle Paul, the one who wrote a lot of our scriptures in the New Testament, did a lot of uh, terrible things. He persecuted God's people. He was terrible. But God still saved him. God used him. So God can still use you. Do not give up. Do not lock out yourself. Because listen, the door is still open. That's why you see the scripture says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Knock. And the door shall be opened. But a lot of people look at, uh, go to the door, or of course they find it as though it's closed. Then they do not want to knock. Or if they knock, they knock only once. The scripture says, knock. Continue knocking, brothers and sisters. Because there is somebody behind that door who will open for you. And Jesus refers to himself as the door. He refers to himself as the door. He is the door. He is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. So if you desire life, everlasting life, seek God. Come to him and he will give you rest. Some of you are having sleepless nights. You're having terrifying dreams. It could even be court cases that you're going through. And you do not have rest. Some of you have horrific dreams. You see things and you try to explain it to people, but they do not understand you. Or even when you, uh, you are so per terrified, per uh, are terrified to explain it to people. But the scripture says, come and let us reason together. You are not far from saving. Now the scripture says, though they are red like crimson. crimson. They shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing, brothers and sisters. Some of you are going through terrible situations because you are not willing to be obedient to the voice of God. Because you are not willing. You have to reach at a point 
where you say, I am willing, where you surrender. You surrender all, all to God. If you are willing, you will eat the good of the land. Brothers and sisters, God wishes above all things that you prosper. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to do well. A lot of people have a narrative that God does not want them to do well. Just because they are suffering, they blame it on God. Just because they are going through a a storm of life, they put all the blame to God. And yet God is not responsible for your predicament. If you can know who is responsible for your predicament, you will not be uh, blaming God. There are some times where we ourselves as people bring situations to our lives. We invite the enemy without knowing. Sometimes, in most cases, it's the enemy who does all that uh, destruction and plundering. Some of you have been plundered. Right from your youth, you have been experiencing losses. Things have not been working out. Your relationships have been dead. But God says, come, let us reason together. An invitation is sent out to you. Look at Job. Job was a wealthy man. And there was no one in the land as wealthy as Job. In fact, he was known for his uh, riches. He was a wealthy man. But also, he did not forsake God. He continued uh, glorifying God, being obedient to God. But the scripture clearly indicates that Job lost his wealth. He lost not only his wealth, but his children. His wife told him to curse God and die. Job went through uh, trying moments. But he did not curse God. He continued praising God. Even when his friends came to give him counsel, they came to counsel him. Instead of counseling him, they were pointing fingers at him. They were accusing him of a sin he had not committed. Now, for those that have read the story, you know that Job uh, is restored. Job is restored. His wealth is restored. So, brothers and sisters, you are just going through the trial. Remember, that is not the the, the final place where you are going to end up. You are just going through it. You are going through the storm. It does not mean that the storm is going to be permanent. A time will come when the storm will be no more. And the time can be now. You only need to speak a word, just like Jesus spoke to the storm. And the storm was calm. You need to speak to your condition, whether it is finances, speak to them because you have authority over them. I hope this word has been a blessing to you. I hope it has encouraged you. Go out and uh, leave your comment and let me know in the comment section. Now, until next time, shalom.